yeah, so this is uh, this is a modification of some uh, presentations that I've done in the past, but sort of updated for the new um, things that I'm working on, uh, new thinking as I'm going, because um, it's very much a journey, all of this uh, for myself, um, because, um, yeah, I mean, I'm using this stuff every day and, it, and I just sort of evolve in the way that I'm using it. Um, and so I started digital agencies in 2007, which seems like years ago now. Um, and then I've been a user, uh, an R user since 2012. And that was just after I moved to Denmark. So um, it was um, it was an amazing time, you know, new country. And then um, Excel broke on my computer and um, couldn't get it installed. And I knew I needed to look at R anyway from a recommendation from my, uh, one of my wife's friends. Um, because I'd been given a task on how to forecast uh, web data. And um, apparently R was the way to do it. So I had a little play around and um, just stuck with it ever since, really. Um, and it was around about the time that Shiny was coming into R as well. And I just thought Shiny was sort of part of R, but it was actually we were using it just as it was coming out. So I've been using Shiny a lot. And Shiny is a sort of dashboarding tool, which... Um, makes it uh, easy to present your results in an interactive manner. Um, and so um, just after my daughter was born, actually, which is so five years ago, um, I coded up this tool sort of combining the things that I just learned, which was Shiny, uh, Google Analytics downloads, and this causal impact um, uh, library. And, um, and that became this app, GA Effect, and that and then I tweeted it and it just went everywhere. And I got all these calls and emails about it and all this. So um, I can definitely say that R and Shiny has really helped my career and exposure and things like that. Maybe it's why I'm talking here today. Um, because then after that, everything, you know, I got, I got onto this Google Developer Expert program for Google Analytics and Google Cloud. And then I just started uh, doing more and more packages for R and CRAN. And it's just sort of all sort of, seems that was a good trigger event for everything that happened. Um, it's actually changed URL um, since, since that tweet uh, because um, of Google's authentication rules, you need to have a bit more control of where the domain is. So it was hosted on shinyapps.io, which I didn't have control of. So now it's on the IH uh, nordic.dk's um, domain. So that's the new uh, URL, if you wanna check it out again or anything like that. And then, um, yeah, basically I've been like working on these um, uh, R libraries that I've needed for my work. And so this is sort of, you can sort of track my, what I'm working on, basically by what package is coming out um, when I'm looking at this stuff. And so I actually started from an SEO background. So I did a lot of search console uh, web analytics coming out of that. Um, and so that was my first package that I put on CRAN and all of that. But then because I was on the Google Analytics, uh, GDE program, I could, um, I was getting onto the beta of the new Google Analytics API, uh, V4. And actually the app and web API has just come out like like a few hours ago. So that's gonna be um, in uh, the next sort of evolution of Google Analytics R. But then because Search Console and Google Analytics R are both using the same sort of Google authentication, I moved that out into its separate package, Google Auth R, to make it easier to work with. And then from that, you can just generate all these other packages. So then I started using Google Compute Engine. So I did a Google Compute Engine R package, um, used a lot of BigQuery with the GA360 um, things. So I made a BigQuery package, um, Google Cloud Storage, and then Google Language R is combining all of the sort of um, uh, API uh, calls to machine learning applications. So like translation, uh, speech to text, text to speech, um, NLP, which is really kind of handy. And then Google Cloud Runner is the one I've just come out recently. And that kind of epitomizes the sort of pinnacle of everything that I've been kind of thinking about of how to work with um, Google Cloud and Runner and um, all of it and digital marketing. So basically, if you're looking for the latest thinking, then that package is the one to, to look at. Um, so just a quick note about, because I get this question a lot about why uh, to use R and everything. I think probably a lot of people here already know, but just, just in case. Um, I mean, I would say that R is very sort of, it's got a lot of specialized tools for every stage of a data project. Um, and um, it's, it's, and there's sort of, 
the way you th I've thought about approaching these data projects has changed since I've been using R. So if you sort of took away R tomorrow and I never used it again, it still would have had a heavy effect on how I sort of process data, even if I was using Excel or something like that. Um, and splitting it out, I mean, it's got some gathering data uh, packages and that's sort of kind of what I contributed to Google Analytics R and Search Console R. And then it's got this whole sort of uh, universe of how to clean data in this tidyverse packages from Hadley Wickham, um, et cetera, in RStudio, um, which um, just makes it, yeah, uh, really sort of readable and nice. And then obviously modeling data is what most people think are is um, its strengths is like, it's a lot of statistical packages, a lot of machine learning packages. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of um, statistic professors are, when they write their paper, they also write an R package to sort of illustrate their new um, uh, way of doing statistics and stuff. So it's so uh, very sort of always integrated in that. And then it, there's the data presentation. I mean, this presentation is made, is made in R uh, using R Markdown. Shiny, I've always talked about. And ggplot2 is sort of very sort of um, high regarded as a way of how you think about the grammar of graphics and making presentations and things. And then we've got all this JavaScript stuff and that you can like integrate with R as well to make all the interactive graphics that you might see online and stuff. So every time you see an interactive JavaScript graphic, you can do it in R as well um, via, via HTML widgets, which is another package. So it's got kind of like everything you need uh, in that regards. Um, and then where it kind of sits for me is that um, it, it, as I said, it's sort of R is a way of, it makes me think about data projects in, in a sort of specific way, um, especially if you subscribe to the sort of Hadley Wickham tidy data thing, the tidy data flow, and he calls it like a pit of success. If you think about data this way, then you're more likely to succeed uh, in doing these projects. Um, and I, I really love Python too. Python I actually knew um, first uh, before. Um, and Python's really good because it's like the second best programming language for everything, you know, so it's so general. Um, it's got a lot of support, um, a lot of the Google Cloud platform stuff uses Python as a first thing. Um, and I, I just, it's the second best program and everything. So like for R, I think for data science, I think, and data processing, R is the best one, but then Python is like uh, there for everything else. And I think if you know like SQL um, or SQL, whatever you want to call it, for extracting data, um, JavaScript for like tagging and visualization, and then a sort of server side, a, um, what do I call it, a system program, which is full of fast stuff. So Python and R are very like slow as languages. They're fast for developing stuff, but they're slow in sort of actual processing time. So if you've got like a, um, something like Go or Java as a, um, as to getting rid of bottlenecks and things like that, then um, I think you've got pretty much everything you need uh, when, you know, data projects come in for coming in. And then why, why use R in the Google Cloud at all? Um, well, a lot of times it's just because you've written the code sort of locally and it works in your machine. And now you, you, you want to sort of take those capabilities and scale it up and put it into production. Um, and, uh, you know, some people say that you need to then like write it in Java or something like that. And I totally disagree with that. You can basically just package it up and push it into the cloud and sort of get it working uh, that way. Um, and I think R is just basically the ultimate um, user uh, sort of interface to stuff. Because once you get your head around how data frames work and all of this, um, then R is just this ultimate, very flexible UX that can integrate with all kinds of systems. Um, so it's, it's nice to do that. And then you can just level up R's abilities. Um, I mean, if you, if you can't process something locally in memory, then you can just sort of boot it up into the cloud, give it more memory or uh, processing power and just sort of times everything by a thousand with that. And a recent sort of thing that's come up now is that even um, you can actually share R results with non-R users using the cloud. So the Shiny app is an example of that. You don't need to be an R user to use that Shiny app. It's just an app that's on the web. Um, but we'll look at later as well, just how you can just share sort of, sort of little snippets of R code um, that's maybe doing a forecasting or something like that. Um, just share that with people who aren't using R, but you know, just can still benefit from R's um, capabilities. So um, that's kind of where we, where I am at the moment with it. 
And throughout all of this, when you're talking about Google Clouds, um, there's a kind of, I like this hierarchy thing that you're talking about. So um, with Google, with all the clouds, you can basically, you can choose to have more control over the systems um, and you're sort of more fundamentally working with what the systems do. And that's when you're in like virtual machines, which are basically just copies of the machine you've got under your, under your desktop or your laptop or something like that. Um, but then as you move kind of up this abstraction pyramid, you kind of give more and more of the um, boring stuff to the cloud vendor. And, um, and basically just, you just then send up your code or your container and they deal with all the sort of server stuff and you just run your code. Um, and that's definitely where I, I want to be. I want to be at the top of this pyramid as much as possible because I don't want to sort of worry about networking and all that stuff. Uh, so that's kind of the motivation for a lot of this stuff is to try and get up this pyramid. So it's as easy as possible, just send up your code and it works uh, in what you're doing. So um, I think one of the fundamental thing once you're um, using R and you want to use it in the cloud is that you, you should know Docker as well. So this is a sort of dependency in a lot of the things that you need to know how to use Docker. And this is so, some people get intimidated by this, but uh, I don't think it's um, it's too bad once you sort of get, get involved with it. And um, I have to mention this Rocker project, which is basically the foundation for all things Docker uh, in the R world. And they uh, are they responsible for creating all these images that are useful for our work. Um, so our ver there, that's basically just a version of R that's uh, you can sort of choose which version of R you want to be running. They've got one of R Studio pre-installed, so you can quickly get up and running with uh, an R Studio instance in the cloud, for instance. Um, and then uh, Tidyverse is the one with all of those uh, tidy. We'll just turn that. <clears throat> with all the tidyverse packages about data cleaning and all that sort of pre-installed, shiny as well. And then the recent one is this ML GPU, which sort of takes care of how to configure all the uh, GPUs um, for machine learning, um, which is, it can be a complete mare actually to try and um, hook up a GPU and all this. So um, they take care of all of the um, CUDA stuff and all of that, which can be quite complicated. So that's a really nice image as well to just get started on using a, a, a GPU for your machine learning models. So, um, so I always say thank you to these guys because they're the ones that, uh, that did it. <laughs> um, so if you've never seen a Docker file before, this is pretty much one typical one that I'm using. Um, so, and, and what happens is this from is the most important thing because that's where, because you can build on other Docker files. So each Docker file is building on another one that you've, that's been made before and given a name. So Rocker Arver is the sort of just R version and then they've installed Tidyverse on top of that. So here what I'm doing is I'm taking that Tidyverse one and then I'm installing some of my packages that I've got uh, on top of this. And if you can think about it, like these run commands, if you've booted up a new machine, a new, it's usually a Linux machine, and you want to install um, R or whatever, then you'd have to type these commands in to actually get to everything installed. And that's basically what this Docker file is. This is a, it's a recording of all of the things that you would type into that machine as you're setting it up. Um, and, um, but the nice thing is it's just a plain text file, so you can check it into GitHub, say, and it's just a sort of way of versioning and really controlling the environment that you're um, working in. And the cloud have really kind of taken this on board as a way of making sure that you're always working with exactly the right dependencies and things like that. And it really is fundamental to, um, to, to working with R in the cloud, I think. Um, so I really think, yeah, you need to, I think Docker and R are a really nice combination because they kind of cover each other's uh, sort of weaknesses. Um, I mean, one weakness of R is that it's um, a bit alien to the IT department. They're like, oh, R, oh, yeah, I don't know, you don't know how to unit test it or whatever like that. So, it, but a lot of IT departments already have Docker running. So you can say, okay, don't install R, so you need to maintain that. Just install Docker and then I can run my Docker container, which runs R inside um, and you don't have to worry about it. Um, and version control, because R is an open source language, then, you know, things change rapidly in what you're doing. So sometimes if you want to put things in production, you want to make sure that um, you've got exactly the same library version that's working with exactly the same functions and stuff like that. So when you've got that Docker image, it's fixed to whatever has been installed with at the time. So that's a really good way of making sure that, you know, uh, R updates aren't going to break code and things like that. 
And then it's very scalable because you can actually run multiple Docker containers at once. So if you want to sort of get um, a billion R processes running at the same time, it is now possible with uh, these Docker containers. Um, okay, so this is a kind of, I'm going to sort of move into sort of how we're using R at the moment and the job that we're doing. Um, and a lot of it is just you've got R scripts that are running sort of various sort of imports, exports, modeling stuff. Um, you've got shiny apps and then you've got APIs. And these are kind of the main sort of areas that we work in. Um, and this is just a slide from an earlier slide that I've got where I go very much into detail about how you scale these things. Um, you can either get a bigger machine or you can get lots of little machines. But today, because we've only got 20 minutes, I'm just going to talk about serverless scaling because that's the one that I usually want to be using anyway. Um, and that's basically where you want to just send your code up and your data and just let them sort out you know, how it's done and you just get the results back. And that's uh, pragmatically a lot better way. And so get flashing up that uh, pyramid again. Um, if you're kind of choosing where you want to work, um, it, you know, but you'll be working at the bottom of this pyramid if the functions at the top, uh, the capabilities of the top things aren't, you know, or you want more control. So there you'd be maybe using Google Compute Engine R to just launch a VM, which is exactly the same as the VM you've got, uh, your VM, sorry, it's virtual machine uh, that you've got at home. But maybe then you're working on Kubernetes or something like that. Um, but today we're going to be sort of talking more at the top, which is sort of cloud run, cloud build, which is in this sort of serverless area at the top. So yeah, Google Cloud Runner is basically um, the package that I have to um, help you easily, more easily work with Cloud Run and Cloud Build and Cloud Scheduler. And Cloud Run is this sort of uh, ascendant, uh, well, it came out a couple of years ago, I think, and it's just getting more and more capabilities. It's a big focus for them. And um, they're just trying to make it as easy as possible to run stuff in a, in a HTTP. So you can run websites on it, you can run things, and it, but you basically, it runs containers that you've got. It just runs them in a way that's totally managed. So I've had these like Docker containers running, say Shiny or APIs, and I've used them in various instances, so like on VMs locally and things like that. And then I could just migrate that Docker container straight into Cloud Run and it works as well. So that's another nice thing about Docker is that you can kind of move the platform. The platform that it's running on doesn't kind of matter that much. So you just kind of choose one that's easier and easier to work with. And also it means you can use different clouds. So I'm using Google Cloud here, but you could take that same Docker container and run it on uh, AWS or Azure as well, I'm pretty sure. Um, so when you're using Cloud Run, um, the really big thing for me is that it's auto scaling. So um, that means that as it gets more and more requests, then it's gonna launch more and more, sorry, my alarm's going off, going off to meetings. So um, as you're running more and more um, R commands against it, then it'll launch more and more containers. Um, and that'll, you know, as long as you've got the money, it'll just keep scaling it up and up and up um, so that you, you'll always have the service running. But another really key thing is that it scales from zero. So that means that when you have no requests, then it's just sitting there and it doesn't cost you any money, which is a key thing really. So if you've got like a service which, um, yeah, you only use it occasionally. You don't want to set up a server and pay for that server all of the time to uh, to have you know thirty dollars a month or whatever to do it. So then here you can just deploy it straight to Cloud Run, and then when no one's using it, it's not costing you any money. Awesome. And then as soon as some people start hitting it, the first hit is a little bit slow, so it's sort of warming up. Then once it's warmed up, then it's just as uh, as if it was running all the time. And it takes care of HTTPS and all the authentication stuff, all the things, networking stuff that you don't usually want to bother with. Um, but some of the cons of it, it, it is like a HTTP thing, so it's stateless. So, so that means that um, if you want to run stateful things, so that's things where each hit, it sort of needs to know what happened before, it's not, it's not supporting of that. And that means it's a quite limited support for Shiny. You can't scale Shiny up to millions of users, for instance, using it. You have to only keep it to only a few users for, for Shiny. Um, so, but the, um, if you're making an API in R, then um, there's this amazing package uh, called Plumber. And, and to make an API uh, is the code below what we've got here. Um, and it basically works with annotations on your function. So hopefully you know a little bit of R, but so this is not alien to you, but, but this is a function and this is just gonna print out some HTML. So it's just to say, 
here we are, here's function. And then when you're using Plumber, you just add these annotations at the top here. So you put like, it's gonna be a get request. And when you go to the hello endpoint, then trigger this function. And we want to return HTML. Um, and, that, and that I think is just so simple to, and to get your hand, head around. And so you can have all your existing functions um, in our done. And then if you want to make a plumber API, you basically just need to put it into a script and add these sort of annotations and then you've got it, um, which I think is pretty amazing. So that was a simple one. Um, this is a sort of more complicated one. I was doing that. Yeah. Okay. So this is sort of how to adapt it to actual real R codes, just to show you a sort of more complicated example. So this one we're saying echo is the sort of endpoint here. And then here we've got a parameter as well. So this is a parameter as in like the uh, question mark that you put in the URL. Um, so if you put in the message variable, then this is going to run R codes basically is the, is the demonstration. And this R code could be very complicated or very simple depending on what your needs are. And this will just like return the message back saying blah, 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 blah. Um, this one is actually going to plot out a, a plot. So, I mean, because it's uh, API, it actually doesn't need to return just HTML. It can return like, images or other stuff as well. So, um, so here we got uh, a function that will um, bring out a plot. And this is a common um, plot uh, example that's used in R. But this, the point is, is that it's used doing it via a um, API. So let me just see if I've got an example of this. Um, yeah, so I'll get that to the example in a minute. And then but before, before that, you're going to need a Docker file to run this. And this is uh, a Docker file that is very much more simple. This is all boilerplate stuff, which is just launch the, um, the plumber uh, server. And then this is just uh, use the script that you're doing that before. So now I need to stop sharing my screen. Um, okay, let me just work this out. Stop share and then share desktop. Is that working? Yeah, all good. Good, good, good. All right, so, so here we have an example of this uh, script here and this script here. Okay, so this is this is a um, R API that's running on um, Cloud Run uh, at this HTTP endpoint, and um, and you can change this domain to one that you know is a is your domain and all this, and then this plot is basically every time you call this endpoint, then it's running R code and returning the result of that function. So if I sort of take away this, you can see that the uh, the R code is, is changing according to the um, uh, parameter that you're sending in. And this is the more simple one. So this is sort of the message one. This is just returning a JSON thing. So hit it, I, and you can see that's responding to the um, parameters that you're sending in. Now imagine this is sort of say data that is coming from your backend system, CRM system or something like that. And, um, and what's actually processing is a forecast or something on that user, uh, like the segment that they're in or something like this. Um, and you can start to maybe see the capabilities that you can use um, this, these APIs for. And the thing is as well is that because this is a HTTP endpoint API, this can be called from any language. Um, so this is a way of distributing R results to people who don't know R as well. So if they're using a Java thing or a Python thing, they can basically call out to your API to get our stuff and, and call that back. And actually someone did that recently. Oh, I should have included that in the presentation. But they did it with a Google Sheet where the Google Sheets was hooked up to one of these APIs and you could like put in the data in the, in the, in the Google Sheet and then um, push a button, it called the API and then returned an R, an R plot in the Google Sheet um, with uh, just, so you could use R within Google Sheets, for example. So how am I doing for time? I'm rambling on over. So, no, um, but am I good? Yeah, kill cool, cool. Um, so Cloud Run, so the R use of cases that we use for uh, Cloud Run um, is just this sort of data modeling as a service. So you could you got all your R functions, you put it into a Plumber API, you run it on Cloud Run, it sits there at zero cost until it's needed. 
and then if it's if it's called like um, a million times, then it can deal with it. Um, so I mean, just as to have a, a data modeling as a service via an API call is is kind of nice. Um, but also, this is very uh, useful for parallel processing. Um, Cloud Run recently increased its timeout from 15 minutes to an hour. So if you've got like a function that takes an hour to process, then what you can do with this parallel processing is actually send off like a thousand API requests at once and wait for it to all process and then it comes back. And that's going to be way faster than doing it all like on your computer. Um, and then because it's HTML, that is well, then you can make like dynamic plots. So um, in Data Studio and Tableau, I've done this, but uh, you've got like iframes where you can install, it kind of responds a little bit to variables that you, you're, you're sending in. Um, and then with those parameters, you can actually change plots um, within the um, data, within the dashboard. Um, so it can be. So that's a way of adding sort of um, capabilities that maybe is not in Tableau. Or they, I think I had to do it because they wanted gauges, <laughs> um, which they wasn't included in Tableau at the time. Um, so um, yeah, so I made a little small script API script that returned a gauge when you sent in a number and things like that. Um, and then because it's rendering JavaScript and HTML, um, you could actually run a complete website if you wanted, uh, purely using R and all of this, and, you know, if you want to. So it's very sort of flexible in what you're doing. Um, okay, so that's Cloud Run, that's like HTTP stuff and all that. Um, but now I just want to talk about Cloud Build, which is sort of the other, and this Cloud Build is um, actually probably my most favorite product on the Google Cloud Platform. Um, it's sort of, you know, a little bit, unknown and all that, but Cloud Build is basically giving you um, free processing power. <clears throat> um, and it's originally intended that when you push to GitHub and you've got a Docker file, it'll build that Docker file for you on a machine in the cloud um, and do that. But it's kind of expanded over the years that it can basically run any Docker command. And it's got this uh, format called uh, Cloud Build YAML, which, you, um, which I'll show an example of in a minute. And it just runs these Docker commands in sequence on a sort of dedicated machine that it's got uh, up there. And it's really useful for like batch services. So if you've got a script that needs to run every 24 hours or something like that, or um, yeah, anything which is sort of slow moving and things like that. And maybe you're not using Airflow or sort of more sophisticated things and you just want something to run every time and all this, then it's just so helpful for that. Um, and you can trigger it either via when you're like committing to GitHub, uh, so it's really good with version control things, um, or via uh, a schedule, or just via an API call or something like that. And what's nice is that because if you've got your R in the Docker container, you can have that kind of Docker container running as one step, but then combine that with other languages in the other steps. So it's a way of integrating R within sort of existing Docker containers out there. Um, so hopefully that comes clear if you, a bit more clear with uh, this example. So this is an example cloud build YAML file. Um, and the steps here are sort of, this is sort of a minimum version. And you've got the name and the name is a Docker container. So the name is like a Docker container it can use. And then um, these sort of run in sequence. So this is just an example where we've got like Docker, it just shows the version of the Docker. And then um, this is a, distribution of Linux and it just says print out this. Um, but uh, here is a rocker R base. So this is an R container and now it's going to run some R script sort of in there. So you can kind of see that these are sort of three different languages, Docker, uh, Linux and uh, R. Um, and But they're all sort of operating in the same environment. So where that comes really useful, um, this is a sort of um, example of what how we're using it. So I've, yeah, so I've actually got this um, Gago library, which is for calling Google Analytics via Go. Um, and I just sort of use this one as an example because it doesn't matter what language the, is it within the container. It just matters what arguments you're sending into the Docker container. So for example, this step here is downloading Google Analytics data uh, for my blog. Um, and you can sort of put in the dimensions that the Docker container is being configured for. And then it's outputting this Google Analytics CSV file um, to the sort of local build of what's going on. Um, and then I'm using the Google Cloud Storage utility to download a R Markdown 
um, template, which might have like a pretty version of the report that you want to do with that data. And then it's actually running this R uh, code to render this um, uh, template so that it's using the newest data that's come from this, uh, this thing. And the, the polyglot thing is that it's using multiple languages here in, in one process. So you've got like Go run, downloading the data. You've got um, Python actually um, downloading the template. And then you've got R running this um, R markdown within that. And then you can use that to email a report or something like that to a user. And you can run that every day on a schedule or on an every day. And this, this is just a really nice way of distributing for people who, want, who are coding, but maybe don't know R or anything like that. You can basically just give them this package here, this Docker image here, and say, you know, this is this is how it's done, and then they can use it without um, knowing much R. Um, and um, yeah, so and it can be all set up so that it builds a Docker file when you get committed to GitHub and things like that. Um, but we we're finding it really helpful because it's like things for. I mean, I don't know if you're using Cloud Composer or Airflow. That's really good for when you've got lots of multiple dependencies and all of this, and you want retries and all of this. But if, for a lot of work that we're doing, it's just simple. We just need this to run every day. We have no dependencies. We just need it to run every day and, and download and upload and things like that. Um, so it's uh, a sort of really sort of helpful thing. And it's been so helpful. We've made this little um, Shiny app that's um, pre-authenticated with the APIs um, that are needed. So Google Analytics, BigQuery, and things like that. Um, and this is running on the Google Kubernetes engine behind a login, because it's got all this uh, uh, pre-authenticated things. And then these Cloud Build YAML files, you can just distribute on the team with these kind of pre-made jobs, um, like this one. And then they can, I mean, if they wanted to adapt this one to, to download a different view or different dimensions, they just need to change this and this and this. Um, and then upload it to this um, uh, app here, and then it's running on a schedule uh, and doing it. So it's just a, it's a good way of automating out my job, because <laughs> usually I'll be sort of setting this up maybe or something like that. So here I could just give them a Cloud Build YAML file and say, here we go, go to this app, change it a little bit here, and then you'll be able to get this running yourself. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that I've done, but I, I mean, I would be amiss to not mention all the stuff that's happening in the R community because the R community is really a lot of, of what makes R work. I mean, it's just amazing all the stuff that's, uh, that's out there. And I haven't touched, I mean, I've been working with it for, you know, at least five years or six, seven years. And I haven't even touched all the stuff that's out there. And it just seems like a gold mine that I keep, <laughs> keep going in and uh, tapping down. There's always this new stuff to watch. Um, but if you're interested, there was a really nice presentation at Google Next 19 last year um, talking about how they're using R with Google Cloud uh, internally. Um, and they just completely, I thought, you know, I've got this. I, I've been working with it a long time. I know how to work with R and Google Cloud. And they just use completely different things from what I'm using um, in a completely new different direction. So lots of uh, ways of doing stuff. But one of my sort of crowning moments is that I'm like mentioned on this slide at Google Next. They spelt my name wrong, but apart from that, you know, all good. Um, so uh, I, I was very happy about that. But the um, but they're using sort of Ju uh, Jupiter and ML Engine and Selden that I've never heard of before. So um, and it's all in this video. So it's really good to um, to go through and see how they're doing. And they're using a lot of Spark as well. And which I, we don't use a lot because we use BigQuery basically. But um, yeah, Spark is um, very popular on Hadoop clusters and things like that. So um, yeah, so that was really interesting. Um, and then um, I, I've got big R query, is that right? Big query R, big query R, uh, which is my library. And that's really only for shiny app. I use it a lot, but it's uh, big R query is the more popular one because it's done by Hadley Wickham. And one of the main reasons it's so popular is that it integrates so well with dplyr, which is one of its main data processing thing. So what you can do is, um, if you don't know SQL, for example, or you can't be asked or bothered <laughs> to write SQL, then um, you can actually run the same dplyr code um, that you're using on the local C CSV file. You can use that to run against a BigQuery table. So this is the way you do it. You sort of load all the libraries and set up this connection with your uh, BigQuery table. And then, um, and then you just run the same dplyr code that you're, um, you've been running sort of locally, um, but you just add this sort of, I'm gonna do it for a BigQuery table. And so this is a way of actually um, 
using SQL without knowing SQL really. Because, um, and the nice thing about Deploy is it's very kind of, once you understand that this pipe operator means do this, then do this, then do this, then do this, then this is kind of very easy to read and much easier to read than SQL um, about what these things are doing. So you can say, take this big query table, group by a column, do a sum for each of those groups, uh, arrange it by uh, descending, and then take the top 10. I mean, that kind of almost reads by itself, I think, in that. Whereas the, the equivalent SQL, you know, unless, until you know a bit of SQL, it might look completely arcane about what's going on. And um, readability and all of that is really good for when you're maintaining this code in six months' time. So that is pretty much what I've got for today. I'm happy for questions and all of this. Um, but the main takeaways I want to talk about is that basically anything scales on Google Cloud Platform, um, including R, because you've got this Docker. And Docker, 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 Docker is the sort of gateway to, to using R in, in a sort of scalable way. So if you're interested in that, then learning a little bit of Docker uh, will go a long way. Um, and then if you want to try the sort of the newer things that I've been talking about today, then Google Cloud Runner is the sort of latest thinking I've got on, on this stuff. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Mo, for inviting me. Uh, and thank you to Ask Hugo for uh, the huge in the R community and making all this stuff for free. And they've got a really nice business model where they're like dedicated to public service and things like that. So it's a really nice support for R Studio and what they're doing. Uh, Rocker and Google for the developer expert program to let me play around all this stuff. Um, and those are my details. Um, there is a sort of R at scale and Google Cloud Platform blog post um, at my blog here, which kind of goes into a lot more depth about uh, what they And I try and sort of update that when new things come about how, how I think about it. And of course, yes, if you want us to build this, please email me at my place of work um, and uh, we can um, build these things for you.